Hello and welcome to uh, the pre-recorded, whatever you would like to call it, recording from Exmouth Baptist Church. Please know that you are prayed for and loved and missed greatly. At this time it is a tough time for each of us and we all miss family and friends and church members and miss getting together but yet we are called to obey the law and Jesus is very clear render unto Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God so I implore each and every one of you please do obey the, the, the what the government is saying and we can see an end to this terrible terrible virus and we can meet again together like we all wish to the more we obey and social distance and stay in the greater the clear up rate will be but I also say that if you need anything anything please 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 contact me contact one of the pastoral team if you need shopping need medication anything you need don't be afraid to contact there are people there who will help and supply let's pray Oh, Father God, we thank you, Lord, that you're a God we can approach. We thank you, Lord, that you are a God who cares. And, Father, we do, Lord, lift up our hearts to you, Father God, and thank you for all the goodness that you give each one of us. But yet, Lord, we are concerned, Lord, and we ask, Lord, that you will be by our sides at this time. Yet, all that we do and say, may we serve you, Father, during this stressful time this world is going through. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I'm going to sing a couple of songs. I've got a short word for you. And, um, well, I pray that this will be of some help. We're going to start, I'm going to start by singing Shout to the Lord. My Jesus, my Saviour, Lord, there is none like you all of my days. I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, power of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing Power and majesty, praise to the King the Mountains bow down and the seas will roar At the sound of your name Hey, I sing for joy at the work of your hands Forever I love you, forever I'll stand Nothing compares to the promise I have in you That's a beautiful song and nothing can compare to the promise we have in our Lord Jesus Christ For surely he is our only hope in times of trouble he is there for each of us. And so I'm going to continue with What a Beautiful Name. You were the word at the beginning One with God, O oh Lord Most High You're hidden Now revealed in you in Christ What a beautiful name it is What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus Christ my Lord What a beautiful name it is Nothing compares to this What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus Didn't want heaven without us So Jesus you brought heaven down My sin was great, your love was greater 
What could separate us now? What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. Cause death could not hold you The hell would be for you You can be released the end of grave The heavens are roaring Praise of your glory For you are the race to life again You have no rival You have no equal now and forever you will reign Yours is the kingdom Yours is the glory Yours is the name above all names What a beautiful name it is What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus Christ my King What a powerful name it is Nothing can stand against What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus There is no name powerful under heaven or under earth than our Lord Jesus Christ. He is our rock. He is our salvation. And I want to share two readings with you today. And the first one comes from Romans. And it's actually Romans 5, 1 to 5. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. To whom? We have gained access by faith into this grace, which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. And the second one I want to read comes from 1 Peter 4, 12 to 19. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that comes on you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed. For the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. If you suffer, it should not be as a murderer or a thief or any other kind of criminal, or even as a meddler. However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name. For it is time for judgment to begin with God's household. And if it begins with us, what will be the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of, the, of God? And if it is hard for the righteous to be saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? So then, those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to faithful, to their faithful creator and continue to do good. Now, I'm well aware that can be a hard thing, and seen in the light of the day, it is very diff difficult. But I have a question.
question and, and, and I want to share with you. Why is there so much suffering in life? Every day we are inundated with news of war, knife crime, bullying, traffic accidents, deadly diseases like the coronavirus at the moment. And then this goes on and on. Our very natural response is to ask why. Why God? Why do these things happen? And if our God exists, which he does, why would he let them happen? But the question of suffering is also a very real question for us all. We all have all encountered suffering one way or another. We might face illness, loss of a loved one, financial pressures, maybe depression, relationship breaks down. Or be caring for an aging parent, all very difficult. Whatever particular struggle we face, the question of suffering is one of the hardest of all and one of the biggest barriers to faith in God. Some of us may even have written God off because of the things we have been through. We could say if God existed, he surely would not have that happen to me. Yet, we have a God who is so good and loving. Why does he allow evil in the world and suffering to exist, to come to pass on those who love him? That has been a question that has puzzled so many for, for, for a very, very long time. That why question goes back thousands of years, my friends. It was asked in the Old Testament by Job and the writers of Psalms. It was especially relevant during the 20th century when we witnessed two world wars. Let's imagine for a moment that God intervened at every moment anyone was going to make a, anyone was going to make a wrong choice. Free will would no longer exist. No. If God waved his magic wand every time we made a bad choice we would merely be puppets controlled by a puppeteer who overruled our thoughts and actions. Would we want to live in such a world? Even if it meant we were insulated from suffering? Could we even speak of the concepts of love, for instance, without being something freely given and freely rejected? The great gift of freedom and love that God has given us comes at the cost of evil, my friends. That people freely choose to carry out in this world in which we live. The critics of Christianity will be quick to reply, that may be, but there is also suffering that exists in the world which isn't the result of our own actions. Think of natural disasters, for instance, disease and illness, the coronavirus that we're facing now. Often these are termed natural evil and presented as a serious challenge to the concept of a loving God. Suffering has been stronger than all other teachings. I have been bent and broken, but I hope into a better shape, said Charles Dickens. Suffering. You see, Kaori Tembun said, we can never learn that Christ is all you need until Christ is all we have. Nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8, 39. Paul, Paul, the great letter writer, goes on to say, we believe then that in the whole created order, is in the same sense out of kilter at a cosmic level. Some theologians trace this to human rebellion, an outward working of the form. Others point to the existence of an early rebellion that's hinted in Revelation 12 9. But yet, whatever the origin the result is a world that is not as it should be yet paul includes the promise that one day creation itself will be liberated from its bondage 
Yes, freedom and glory of the children of God will come. Romans 8, 21. So we live in the tension of a broken world that is awaiting renewal. The natural laws that operate are both a blessing and indeed a curse. Death is a necessary part of the cycle of life, yet it still remains the world's eternal enemy. As Christians, we are called to live faithfully for the kingdom that has already come in our Lord Jesus Christ, while awaiting the kingdom that yet is to come, in which he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, or mourning, or crying, or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. Revelation 21, 4. It is a sad time in which we live. We see suffering all around, but yet, by the same token, it can be argued that the meaningful moral and spiritual growth as a human, as human beings, requires a world where suffering exists. I cannot be generous unless there is someone who has been, who has been generous to me. I cannot show compassion unless there is someone who shows compassion for me. We learn by what we are taught and we have the greatest teacher, our Lord Jesus Christ. While I could not ever, ever say that God or believe that God can directly cause us pain and suffering, I do believe that God is massive enough to weave all our experiences and tribulations into our life as a tapestry, tapestry that will ultimately be beautiful. And if we allow him, he draws us towards him and uh, into us being the people he wants us to be. But perhaps it's all a mystery to us. For instance, could God, could God not have created a possible world in which pain and suffering do not exist and still fulfill our human needs? I think not. When we suffer, we grow. Yet, if we turn, we know that Christ is with us and he is by our sides. Our Lord Jesus Christ ended his days nailed to a cross. He suffered brutally at the hands of the Roman soldiers. He was abandoned by his closest friends in his hour of deepest need. Jesus was described in the Bible as a man of sorrows and familiar with sufferings. If we bring our sufferings to him today, we know we don't have a God who is aloof, indifferent and distant. We can come to a God who knows us and cares for us. He gets it because his son suffered on that cross. He is a God who knows what suffering is, so he is compassionate and caring and loving. You see, we live in a much bigger story in which good wins and evil loses. One day there will be justice. One day all suffering will end. One day there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain and God will wipe away every tear from our eyes. This is an extraordinary description of the tenderness of God, of his plans to put right all the wrongs in this world. But this day yet hasn't arrived to give us why is to give us time to get our choices right before God. God does not always offer us answers in this life. No, but we find answers in his word. In this life, we might never really understand why some things have happened. But God always offers us himself. He offers us his friendship. He longs for us to come to him, to talk to him, bring our suffering to him. Whenever we face and whatever we face, we can choose two ways to go through it with God 
or without God? What will each of us choose? Is my question. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, Father God, I do pray, Lord, for each and every one, Lord, out there suffering at this moment in time, Lord. I pray for our governments and I ask that you, Lord, will come upon them, Lord, in a mighty way and that you will, Father, sustain them. And Father, I ask, Lord, that you will be with each of us. May we help where we can. May we stay close to you, Lord, and may we forever and ever be your children, Lord. So, Father, we do pray for the suffering in this world, Lord, and we ask and pray for the health workers, Lord, that they will be continuing to be strengthened, Lord, that they may continue to care for those who are suffering at this time. And, Lord, I do pray that you, Father God, will be in the midst of all of this, Lord, and work your purposes in your plans for the greater good, we pray. Amen. And so, in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the blessing of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of us. In Jesus' name. Amen.